what exactly does funding actually cover you know location of flight and even with cost of living how does it apply to that with your landing cost does it cover that and how do you go about paying your tuition you know so these are some of the information that i will be discussing today so if you want to know more information and get a full gist make sure you watch this video till the very end Hi, my name is Fida Sesele and in this channel we talk about everything that's whether we're studying abroad in Canada, in the US, in the UK, we talk about scholarship, we talk about how to you know sustain yourself in Canada or in the UK, we talk about visa applications. So if there is some of the information you're interested in, make sure you click the subscribe button so that you can join this family and hit the notification bell so that whenever new videos are released, you'll be the first person to get notified. And also consider liking this video, it's gonna help the YouTube algorithm share this video to more people without further ado let's get started what exactly does funding actually cover you know if i have full funding then does that actually not cover automatically everything that has to do with my visa application well not necessarily you will have to apply for your visa yourself you know everything that has to do with the visa the world the school is just going to give to you is your admission letter with the uh the admission letter if you have a scholarship is going to now state that you have a scholarship that way you know your part of your proof of funds is already covered but even though you have full funding it is in the proof of fund aspect of it is also recommended to add something to in terms of proof of fund also to your scholarship you might be wondering why exactly do i need proof of fund have a secure scholarship but i'm going to tell you okay i'm going to tell you now when you come to either canada or in the us and you have a full scholarship it is you're not really going to start getting your scholarship till about maybe two weeks or i think for mine it was about three weeks so if in that particular time you need something to sustain yourself right so those are some of the things that the visa officers think about when i'm reviewing your application that okay you know before this person's visa is approved we need to have something you know he need to have something to sustain himself that's why you know he's needing to show something about proof of form but overall most of the scholarship you have to do visa application yourself but you can use the admission letter as you know part of the proof of fund another question is does full funding cover flights you know maybe what do you think about you know enjoying yourself in first class and you're thinking of thinking of maybe my scholarship will cover that i wanted to think twice about that you know the reason because i'm so sorry to tell you it doesn't cover it at all you have to work at that yourself okay so when you get a scholarship you get an admission so you really have to book your flight yourself and if you want to get a first class and you know have a smooth you know ride and you know that journey and that flying to your destination then you can buy a first class if you have the money to you know and if you don't have the money you can book, book, a, book a business class but there are some scholarships that can't do reimbursement after you arrive in the university but it is not really certain so i won't i will not i will not advise you to start banking on that if they mention it specifically during the application that is fine but apart from that no way just leave it at that okay let's move to the next step does it cover landing cost you know maybe when you first arrive maybe in the first few days or even the first one two weeks you know there is your scholarship actually cover those landing costs not necessarily so you have to get your own money you know depends on the province where you are so you need to get something that you're going to use to sustain yourself within those first one week or two weeks depends on when your scholarship will be activated so but there might be some scholarships that do offer that you know some of these really big scholarship might but i was saying don't really plan on that you know try to have something that you know in your hands so that when you come you don't have to be begging around asking for money you know that can be really very frustrating right so try to have money okay so if you if you've been enjoying this video thus far so i wanted to hit the like button you know it's really good to help the youtube algorithm to recommend this video to other people and if you've watched to this point you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing it's really good to help you know, the youtube algorithm 
Okay, let's talk about accommodation. You know, does the, uh, the full phone also cover accommodation? Now, there are two ways you can think about accommodation, okay? There is one part where you you can sign up for university accommodation and they can add that accommodation to your, let's say your account, your school account, right? Maybe where your tuition is. Like when I first came to Canada, I didn't you really want, I didn't book any accommodation outside. So I have to book, you know, uh, an, accommod uh, an accommodation in the university for that first semester. So I didn't have to pay anything. It was added to my, you know, it was added to my university account. Although you don't have to book any accommodation, to be honest, before applying for your visa, it is not a criteria. But if you can, it's okay. Especially now that visas are really delaying, so I wouldn't really like recommend you booking any accommodation until you've gotten your visa. The second part where you can get an accommodation is by you know either you know uh, reaching out to somebody in that in that school or city to help you look for it, or you can look for a place and then you can tell that if you see somebody online that you can trust you can tell the person to look at the accommodation for you and there are some other landlords that can actually do like you know a, a virtual viewing for you that way you're able to view everything see the university uh, so not university <laughs> the particular accommodation where you're staying and then if you like it you know they can probably send some paperwork so that when you leave the airport you are not just going to be running here to skate and you already know exactly where you're going to stay you just move to your accommodation right away now let's talk about you know how does stipend actually now work okay does it cover your tuition and with the accommodation basically from what they are paying you in your in your stipend you know you can use it to do a whole lot of other things so in terms of tuition if you have a full phone there are two ways it works okay number one it can be an automatic deduction which means by for normally they pay here graduate students every two weeks right so if you have full funding what they're going to do is they would if your tuition is five thousand let's say okay i'm going, just going to use an instance for myself at the university for alpha beta you know if the tuition is let's say ten thousand dollars per year and you get this fully funded scholarship of like 25 or twenty seven thousand dollars they're going to remove that ten thousand dollars and then whatever is left if you divide that by 24 is going to be what they're going to be receiving every two weeks okay so that's basically how it works if you have thirty thousand dollars and they remove ten thousand dollars so if you if you remove ten thousand dollars from twenty thousand from thirty thousand you'll be left to twenty thousand they, they will divide that by 25 and begin and then they will start to pay you some other times they are if you check your pay stop for every every week every two weeks you are going to see that if your your, your gross pay is like let's say 1500 you will see that probably they've deducted like let's say 500 dollars or 600 dollars from you know from it they, then that goes towards your tuition whatever is left the 800 dollars 1000 dollars 700 dollars is what they are now going to give to you as your stipend okay so overall your, your your stipend actually means scholarship minus tuition right so whatever is left is what you are going to be getting as your stipend and then there are some other part of tuition setup where they pay you all the whole scholarship and then they are going you are the one to now use part of the money to pay your tuition right uh for my in my first year of my phd the scholarship that i got they were paying me you know a, a lot from it and just deduct a little piece of it from tuition okay whatever they deducted i know if i calculate when i calculated that for four months it's really not going to be enough to sort out my tuition so every week once i get my paycheck even though it is painful but i just have to make sure i send something 200 dollars 300 dollars towards my tuition so that's why i started with this video by saying that different universities have and different you know schools actually have different funding policies so you have to find out how it works in your department now once they pay your stipend if they've removed the tuition whatever you do with your stipend is left for you okay so accommodation is left for you you know you can rent if you decide to go rent a an, an apartment that is a, a penthouse a five thousand dollar you know uh, apartment no one really cares if you decide to go for a six hundred dollars you know five hundred dollars accommodation 
nobody cares as far as you come to school and do your classes and research that's basically what the professor is interested in and then in terms of the cost of living it's up to you it's just up to you so when they give when they give you a stipend so whatever you like you just do with your stipend if you want to go you know spend all the whole money at once it's left for you and then in terms of maintaining yourself and other things it's just left for you how you spend your stipend they're not going to ask you and then in terms of research if you're doing let's say masters or phd in terms of doing the actual research so mo you, you, that doesn't come from your stipends of course there are some analysis i just completed one i say uh, about two days ago it it will pay six thousand six hundred dollars for that assay <laughs> that is not my my funding is my um, stipend is not going to cover that so there is no way i can pay that from my stipend so the professors that they're going to be working with they will have that particular tuition sorry that particular um money to pay every of your you know lab supplies and all that and your overall research so that you can focus on doing the research so i hope i answer your question if you haven't liked this video do well it's really going to help the algorithms recommend this video to other people and if you haven't subscribed do what to hit the subscribe button it's really going to help my channel to grow and also for youtube to recommend this video to other people once again thank you for watching this video and i will see you in the next video